when and how do you see that average consumer beginning to, you know, cross, excuse me, cross paths with this technology? And do you think that they will even really know that they are crossing paths with that technology? Or do you see it being more of sort of, you know, a seamless experience? Yeah, uh, so all the above, right? It's gotta be within a product. We, everybody knew the internet was a super powerful thing. Um, but it wasn't until really social media and the iPhone that people needed the internet with them at all times. It wasn't until Uber where you could press a button and get across town and, and that people were like, oh, I need that technology in my life. And then Instagram, um, it was product based, how we even really adopted mobile web and, and all of these different technologies before you know, people would use the internet in a much more sort of like when they needed something from the internet, but it wasn't like tied to you. And, um, and it wasn't like you didn't get the benefit out of it. So you can track these sort of dynamic growths of technologies. In my, in my opinion, it's always product-based. I use the example of Tesla, right? People knew electronic cars were better, but it wasn't until they had this product, the Tesla, that all of a sudden they, they felt like they had a lifestyle improvement. Um, and I think it'll be product-based again with crypto, right? Where uh, I've said it before, if Fortnite skins were on Ethereum, you know, every 15 year old would know how to work a MetaMask like yep. the back of their hand. It wouldn't be a question. <laughs> so it would be zero questions, right? Um, and so it's, to me, the first obvious one is gaming because you don't have any other market at scale where people buy digital stuff because they enjoy it. Um, like everything else in NFT, like most of the stuff in NFT is somewhat tied to value accrual. Um, and largely, large, say. largely, yeah. except for we were talking a little bit before this about Fidenzas and there's an amazing art, you know, art community that loves NFTs, um, and the art for the art. Um, but there's a, a reality that, you know, when you buy a skin in a video game, you buy it cause you think it's cool and you want to play as it. Um, and you have almost over a hundred billion dollars of people around the world and real money spent every year on that. And so that's a market where there's digital stuff where people actually care about the digital stuff. And so if you gave people, um, you know, more ownership and more flexibility and just made that digital stuff, like increase the value of it to the consumer, that's an easy way to conceptualize the first hit, in my opinion, sort of use of blockchain. There's going to be a lot of them. Um, but to me, uh, the, the billion users come from gaming. Um, and then, you know, with that, uh, but but in the end, it's got to be that people just love the game, right? Mm. And and so if people love the game, they want to spend their time there, then they'll spend their money there. Um, and if they then, for example, for grinding in a game, you get like a token um, in your account that you maybe it's non-tradable, maybe it is tradable. Um, just the point is that you get these rewards that are more concrete um, and, uh, and it represents your identity. And I think mm. that those things are really interesting. Um, and so, yeah, I, I've... I haven't been able to think of really anything else for the last four years. Um, and there's a lot of really cool stuff that emerged that is bull market phenomenons, um, like the marketplace tech that we're building uh, is super sick. Um, but, you know, just like you've seen with OpenSea, during the bull market, it's going to be, you know, these insane numbers. And then during the bear market, it's going to be a lot lower. Um, but they're sort of synergistic. But no one's coming into crypto going, wow, this marketplace to trade NFTs is like, this changed my life. It's like, no, that, that makes your life better once you're in Web3. Mm -hmm. um, but for adopting Web3, it's got to be a product you love and it's got to be something that makes your day better. And, um, and to me, like, there's just nothing else besides gaming for the short term. It makes sense. Um, so obviously like you've been in the space for a while you've been like making content for a while like uh a lot of people like look up to you uh for like information like me personally like literally like i've watched uh your videos for years so thank you uh i promise i'll start applying some of the techniques you you, you talk about <laughs> lie. Big i'm lie. lying I'm, I'm i'm gonna keep losing money but uh <laughs> Yes. Yeah, so what, uh, like what advice would you have for like anyone who's like joining the market now, like during like this season of the market? Yeah. I mean, it, the crypto never is crypt, crypto is a game of sort of fighting your emotions. And, um, usually when your emotions are overwhelmingly positive, you should be really freaked out. Um, which is a hard thing to like, which is a hard thing to do. Yeah. Um, and when things are overwhelmingly negative, you should actually be getting a little more excited. And so one of the things that's hard right now, as everyone's getting crushed by this bear market, we have this macro storm, 
is to understand that like this is the time where you're lucky if you pick it up now because no one else is. And you actually are going to get the, the chance to learn when the market's going slow, um, when there's better price. Like you don't want to buy something at the top, right? You want to buy at the lows. But, oh, but the, re <laughs> the, reason, the reason why no one does is because when you the process of getting to the lows and the emotion around the lows is so it's so hard to overcome that. And, um, and so, you know, I am of the belief that we will see whatever the Fed is doing is going to send things down into a place where they need to then ride in and fix the problem. Um, it might not be the same bazooka of money that they had in 2020, um, but the, the economy will require some assistance. And once the easing process starts again, um, crypto will do well. And, uh, and so it's really like, there is an amazing opportunity right around the corner here. And, um, and it does suck. I try on my channel to keep people as interested as I can uh, because I know that like through the 2018 bear market, other content creators inspired me constantly to make better content, to stay engaged, to stay focused, and to not give up um, because it's really hard to to stay focused on something when you feel like embarrassed, when you feel like you've taken a big L's. Um, and I, I know the whole psychology because I went through it and um, and I got my parents in at the peak of the 2017 run. Same. You know, I got them, I lost my mom so much money, you know, and, and um, I just felt embarrassed, right? But, um, but I was lucky to be inspired by this community, which, you know, crypto is more than just a technology. It's a, it's a culture, it's a community. And, and that's something really, really powerful. And so, you know, I consider the role of content creator here, despite the fact that, you know, there is a lot of a lot of sort of negative attention that you get as a content creator here as well. Um, I think that you know the the people that you can keep engaged uh, through these tough times. I think it is a, a really important thing that you do. Um, and so you know what you guys are doing is really important. The NFT community is way more new, way more green, um, way less sophisticated, and probably uh, way more impatient than even the crypto community who are, you know, very, very, you know, tweaky degenerates as well, right? We want things fast and we want, mm. we, the stock market doesn't have enough gains for us and all that stuff, right? And so, um, but the NFT community, I feel like is even more like, this is all so new. And so um, it's really important to understand that like, there is a turning point that happens at the bottom of the bear market and it's not instant, um, but spreading knowledge and spreading good high quality research um and and making sure that you just don't lose the energy in the room to me is just super super important uh for content creators throughout this period because that's the biggest killer is people they they know they're right there they know that the bottom's near they know that it's going to get better soon but after so many days they just like lose hope or maybe they need to get another job or whatever the reasons are they they effectively leave um this the headspace and that is why that's why no one was there in 2020. When when the market turned back on, everyone, even my, even some of the people that I that are like my longtime crypto buddies, were telling me like it's not real, it's not it's not a real run. And I was like, no, this is totally different. Like, look at you know Ave at the time like went like 20x or like Ethland, which was what it was called before. Yeah. Um, and I bought Ethland in 2017 or 2018. And, you know, and, and, and I started seeing the differences. But unless you're really focused on the industry, you won't see those changes where you're like, whoa, I haven't seen this in three years, you know? Um, and, and the difference between seeing a little rally and seeing some real, real dynamic growth in part of the industry, uh, if, if you're going to be around for that moment, you're only going to get there if you're really focused. Mm.